A sister says, asking on behalf of a friend, she's 28 years old, her parents are not getting her married, father is not interested and not even a bit bothered about her future and has no plans for her. Mother is worried, that, but she says it's not in her hand and how would she do it all alone? Girl is earning and maybe can afford her marriage expenses. In this situation, what is the girl's responsibility and what should she do? This question has a number of areas intermingled together. First of all, the issue of finding the right suitor. And from culture to culture, this differs. In India and Pakistan and, and elsewhere, they, that is the girl's family, look for a potential suitor. So they knock on people's doors, telling them that your son is uh, a graduate, your son is an employee, your son is a potential person for marriage, so uh, why don't you consider our daughter? And they look into it uh, uh, and how it goes. In, in, in normal cases, this is not the case. In Arabia and elsewhere, a woman is honored and she is sought after, not the other way around. It's not her parents that go look for a potential suitor. It's the men that look for such a woman with such character and attributes. But this is a cultural thing. If we call people not to go and look, maybe half of the women or more would not get married. So this is issue number one. If the father is not willing to look and the mother says that she's helpless and she cannot do it on her own, you can, or your friend can ask relatives. So she has female cousins, she has aunts, she has acquaintances. So she spreads the words that, listen, I'm 28 years of age, I have a job and I'm financially stable. I'm looking for the right husband. So um, my knight in shining armor, I'm, I'm, I'm okay if he drives a Corolla Toyota. No problem. It doesn't have to be a white horse. I'm okay if his income is below mid uh, class. I'm okay if he's not that handsome, but he has to be uh, at least uh, practicing, praying in masjid, etc. And they look around and then, inshallah, things would escalate and develop. There is nothing wrong in also registering your name without putting your photo or your direct number. Try to put your mahram's number, if you have one, your brother, your uncle, uh, even your father, so that people would look into your profile and see. So post this in Islamic matrimonial sites. There was this site that, mashallah, I know the people working on it, which is called uh, My uh, Better Half. I think it's called uh, My Better Half. It's not My Bitter Half. This is after marriage. But before marriage, you're better half. And uh, I think they have matchmaking services worldwide. So you might look into that. Um, and this is first portion. Second portion is if the guy comes, but you don't have, your father claims not to have the finance to marry you off. In this case, as long as you have saved some money, you can utilize this for your marriage. Bearing in mind that Islamic marriages are supposed to be financially provided for totally by the groom. So it's the man's responsibility to pay for the mahar, for the dowry, to pay for the walima, and if there's a wedding, to pay for the wedding. Now, the scale depends on his financing. So if he comes and says, okay, the walima, I'm gonna uh, slaughter a ram or two and invite 10, 15, 20 people max. This is his right. If he says, I don't want to make a wedding in a hotel room or uh, in a hotel hall or somewhere fancy, this is his right. If the girl's family say, no, we have like 150 guests from our side, uh, we will contribute or we will make, make our own wedding party. There is nothing wrong in that, inshallah. So basically speaking, you have to try your level best and don't 
be negative. Don't put obstacles. Whenever there's a will with the grace of Allah, there'll always be a way. So trust Allah, make a lot of dua, consult those around you, and inshallah, you will find a way out.